In this video, we're going to look at a couple of more inequalities that we're going to solve, and then we'll also do the introduction to absolute value inequalities. So, just as a warm up here, write each of these sets as an interval and in set builder notation. <clears throat> so, by the set, it means the shaded part. Might be hard to see, but the only shaded part is in between here and here. Okay, so. As an interval, it's very easy. Negative 1 with a square bracket, because that's a solid circle, <clears throat> comma 2 with parentheses, because that's an open circle. That's, the, that's what this represents. This symbol is the same set as the set that's shaded on this line. And in set builder notation, we would say the set of all x such that, let's see what x has to be in between in between 2 and negative 1. <clears throat> now you put the less than or equal on the negative 1 side because it can equal negative 1, but it cannot equal 2. Now what happens when you get this situation? This is shaded and also this is shaded. Well, remember what I said? If you have two intervals that don't overlap, these two don't overlap, you're going to have to just put a union in the middle and do this interval which would be negative infinity to zero, and this interval, which would be two to infinity. Let's get our brackets correct. So this will be negative infinity, parentheses always, up to zero with a square bracket, because that's included in the set. Now the two is not included in the set, so parentheses to infinity, parentheses. This is the interval representation of this. You can think of that one corresponding to that interval, that one corresponding to that interval, but you need to put that little symbol in between them. <clears throat> and then we could say, well, that's a set of all x such that x, let's see, x is less than or equal to 0. That's this. Less than or equal means either equal to zero or to the left, or x greater than two, not greater than or equal, greater than. This is set builder notation. <clears throat> okay, now these are the first examples we're gonna do. I'm just gonna do a couple of these. These are compound inequalities. Notice there's two less than symbols in there, or less than and less than or equal. <clears throat> what we want is to get the x isolated in the middle. All right, so we're going to end up getting x in be caught in between two different numbers. So subtract three from both from well, I can't say both sides. All three sections. Eventually, we want x by itself. So let's get rid of that three first. So negative twelve less than six x less or equal six minus three is three. <clears throat> okay, next thing we do is divide everything by 6 to get x by itself in the middle. So x is in the middle. 3 over 6, I'll reduce that to 1 half. Negative 12 over 6, negative 2. Oops, less than. Negative 2 less than. x less than or equal to 12. Oh, that less than or equal to 1 over 2. So the solution as an interval is just say negative 2 comma 1 half. Now, this one needs a square bracket. That one needs a rounded bracket. <clears throat> That's the solution. Maybe I'll put the graphed solution over here, but it's quite easy. And it'd be a solid on the right, open on the left, shade everything in the middle. Two different ways to write the solution. <clears throat> All right, next example. Once again, we need to get x in the middle. So let's add 9 to all three sections and get 9 less than negative 6x less or equal 9 and 7 is 16. Then we divide by negative 6 to get x by itself in the middle. <clears throat> and note what happens. We're dividing everything by negatives. We have to reverse all those inequalities. So that's now greater. 
this is greater or equal. And that cancels to give me x in the middle. 6 over 6, 16 over 6 is negative. Negative um, reducing gives me 8 over 3. And on this side we get 9 minus 6, which is 3. Ne uh, sorry. It's ne negative 9 over 6. So that would be reduced to 3 over 2, negative 3 over 2. Okay, well, we cannot write the interval in this form. I mean, unless you're really thinking ahead. We need to rewrite it so we're dealing with less thans, not greater thans. So we need to flip it all the way around so that negative 8 thirds is on the left. Less or equal x less than negative 3 over 2. <clears throat> you can just remember that on the negative 3 over 2, the, the symbol is pointing towards the x, just like it is over here. Between the x and the negative 8 over 3, it's pointing to the negative 8 over 3, just like it is over here. Okay. Now we can write it like an interval. Negative 8 over 3 with a square bracket, comma negative 3 over 2 with a rounded bracket. And I'll let you write down the, on the number line the solution. Just draw the number line. Draw this number. Draw this number to the right. Shade everything in between. Put a closed circle on this one, an open circle on this one. OK, now we got to dive into absolute value inequalities. OK, this can be a little bit confusing, but if there's just a couple of things you'll memorize, you will have no problems with this. Absolute values. The absolute value of z is denoted, the symbol we use is z with vertical bars around it. That's the absolute value of b. Now let's define it, the absolute value. The absolute value of x denoted like this, describes the distance from 0 to x on the number line, or the distance from x to 0 on the number line. Distance, we always think of positive. No matter if you're measuring going from left to right, right to left, we think of distance as being positive. So therefore, the absolute value of x is never negative. And just simple review uh, questions here. The absolute value of negative 4? 4. Absolute value of 2.5? 2.5. Absolute value of 0 is 0. Note that I could not say the absolute value of x is always positive. It's not because of zero. Po zero is neither positive nor negative. So if you have a positive number inside absolute values, you can just remove the absolute values. If you have a negative number, you remo re remove the, ne the negative sign when it's in absolute values. Basically what that's saying is if zero is there, one, two, three, and negative four is there, what's the distance between negative four and zero? That's one, two, three, four. What's the distance between positive 4 and 0? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4. OK, so there's another, here's another definition that uses, that, that treats it like a piecewise function. And I'll explain what that means. Well, you'll, you'll see it. <clears throat> All right. It's going to take two steps, two pieces here. If x is greater than or equal to 0, I should have put the word if there. If x is greater than or equal to 0, what is the absolute value of x equal to? How could you simplify it if x is greater than or equal to 0? You can just remove the absolute values, right? Like this one over here, 2.5 is positive. So the absolute value of it is just 2.5. So I can say the absolute value of x is equal to x <clears throat> as long as x is greater than or equal to 0. Well, how about if x is less than 0, what do I put here? Well, what could I put here? <clears throat> I can't use absolute value of x because we're defining it. I can't use it in the definition. 
So what do I do to negative 4 to get a positive 4? I multiply it by negative 1. So negative x. And I know some students say, well, it's impossible. Absolute value can't be negative. This is not negative. That is positive. Because x itself, by itself, is negative. When you put a negative negative, when you put a negative in front of a negative number, it makes it the opposite. It makes it positive.